Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are discussing about part 2 of stool parasites. In this video we are going to discuss about helmets which is divided into three parts. Platy helmets, thorny headed worms and nematodes. The platy helmets again divided into trematodes and cystodes and they are flukes and tapeworms. The thorny headed worms rarely infect human and nematodes includes round worm, pin worm, thread worm, etc. First is Enterobius vermicularis, also known as pin worm. The phylum is nematode, genus is Enterobius. The route of infection is the gravid adult female deposits eggs in perianal fold of infected person. Infection occurs via self inoculation or through exposure of eggs in the environment. Self inoculation occurs by transferring eggs to mouth with hands that have scratched the perianal area. Symptoms include perianal pruritus, teeth grinding, aneurysis, insomnia, anorexia, irritability and abdominal pain which can mimic appendicitis. Life cycle of Enterobius vermicularis The eggs which are present on the perianal folds of infected person ingested by the same human through the self inoculation. After ingestion, this egg reaches to small intestine and the larva hatch from the egg. This larva becomes adult in the lumen of cecum and these adults again lay the eggs which reaches to perianal folds. Thus, the cycle completes. The eggs of Enterobius vermicularis measures around 60 micron by 30 micron. They are transparent, elongated to oval in shape, slightly flattened on one side. Microscopic identification of egg collected in the perianal area is a method of choice for diagnosing enterobiosis. It is done by applying cellulose tap to the anus of suspected patient, especially in the morning before patient's first bowel movement. Eggs will adhere to the tape and can be seen microscopically. The adult worms are also diagnostic when found in perianal area or during anorectal or vaginal examinations. Adult male of Enterobius vermicularis measures up to 2.5 mm long and adult female measures are up to 13 mm long. The next is Trichuris trichura which is called weep worm. The phylum is nematode, genus is Trichuris. The root of infection is through the soil contaminated hands or food. The symptoms are patients are mostly asymptomatic but in the heavy infections especially in the small children can cause gastrointestinal symptoms like abdominal pain, diarrhea, rectal prolapse and possibly growth retardation. The life cycle of Trichuris Trichura The unembryonated eggs which are passed in the feces which are converted into embryonated eggs and these embryonated eggs are ingested by human which reaches to small intestine. The larva hatch from the egg in the small intestine and this larva converts into adult worm in the cecum. This adult worm again lay the unembryonated eggs which are passed in the feces. Thus the cycle completed. Trichuris trichura eggs are 55 micron by 25 micron in diameter. They are barrel shaped, thick shelled and possess a pair of polar plugs at each end. The adult male of Trichuris trichura are 45 mm long with a coiled posterior end and adult females are 50 mm with a straight posterior end. Both sexes have a long weep like anterior end. Adults reside in the large intestine, cecum and appendix of the host. Now let's learn about roundworm which is Ascaris lumbricoides. The phylum is nematode. Genus is Ascaris. The root of infection is through the soil contaminated hands or food. The symptoms include growth retardation, malnutrition in children with heavy infections and in adults worms usually cause no acute symptoms. 
हाई वॉम बॉर्डन्स मे कॉज एबडमिनल पेन इंटेस्टिनल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन एंड पोटेंशियली परफोरेशन इन वेरी हाई इंटेंसिटी माइग्रेटिंग एडल्ट वॉम मे कॉज सिम्टमेटिक ओक्लूजन ऑफ बिलियर ट्रैक्ट एपेंडिसाइटिस एंड नेजो फेरेंजल एक्सपल्जन पर्टिकुलरली इन इन्फेक्शन इन्वॉल्विंग अ सिंगल फीमेल वॉम द लाइफ साइकल ऑफ एस्केरिज लम्बरिकॉइड्स Fertilized egg and unfertilized egg shared interfaces of infected individuals. The fertilized egg, through developmental mechanisms, convert into embryonated eggs. The human ingests these embryonated eggs, which reaches to small intestine. The larva hatch from the egg and can enter the circulation and migrate to lungs. These migrated larvae are coughed up and swallowed and re-enter the gastrointestinal tract. The maturation done in the small intestine so larva becomes adult in the small intestine and this adult again shed uh, eggs which are fertilized and unfertilized these eggs are passed in the feces and thus the cycle completed adult worms lives in the lumen of small intestine a female may produce approximately 2 lakhs egg per day which are passed in the feces the fertilized and unfertilized ascaris lumbricoids egg are passed in the stool of infected host fertilized egg are rounded and have a thick shell unfertilized eggs are elongated larger than fertilized egg and their shell is thinner with larger protuberances adult of ascaris lumbricoids are the large Round worm. Female measures around 20 to 35 cm long with a straight tail, and males are smaller at 15 to 31 cm and tend to have a curved tail. Now let's learn the hook worm, which is Ankylostoma duodenal or Nacator americanus. The phylum is Nematode. Genus is Ankylostoma. The symptoms include abdominal pain, nausea, anorexia, iron deficiency, anemia in heavy infections due to blood loss and occult blood test is positive in the stool examination of infected person. The infection also causes protein malnutrition, eosinophilic pneumonia and urticarial rash. The route of infection is through the skin. The life cycle of intestinal hookworm. The eggs are passed in the feces of infected person the rabditi form larva hatches from this egg and this rabditi form larva converts into filari form larva in the environment this filari form larva is a infected stage of hookworm this larva can penetrate the skin of another individual after penetration of the skin the larva enters the circulation it can reach to lung by exit circulation from there they are coughed up and swallowed again which reaches to small intestine or this larva can become developmentally arrested and remain dormant in the tissues which can later reactivated the reactivated larva may enter the small intestine in the small intestine the larva becomes adult and this adult sheds the egg in the feces thus the cycle completed The eggs of Ankylostoma and Nacator cannot be differentiated microscopically. The eggs are thin-shelled, colorless, and measures approximately 75 micron by 40 micron. Two important larvas are there for hookworm. First is Rabditiform larva, and second is infective third-stage Filariform larva. The Rabditiform larva that hatch from the egg are 300 micron long. they have a long buccal canal and inconspicuous genital primordium the rabditiform larva are usually not found in stool if the larva are seen in stool it must be differentiated from the l1 larva of strongylodus stercoralis the infective third stage filariform larva are 700 micron long they have a pointed tail and they are n sheets with about 1 to 2 ratio of length of esophagus to intestine adult hookworms reside in the small intestine of their host ankylostoma duodenal male measures approximately 12 mm long and female measures around 15 mm long nacator americanus males measure around 9 mm long and females around 11 mm long 
Now let's learn strong iloid stercoralis, also called the thread worm. The phylum is nematode. The genus is strong iloidus. The root of infection is the filari form larva in contaminated soil which penetrate the human skin when the skin contacts the soil. The symptoms include localized pruritic erythematous rash at the site of skin penetration. And the systemic symptoms include brachial irritation, dry cough when larva migrate to lungs and up to trachea. The intestinal symptoms include diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain and anorexia after the larva are swallowed into the gastrointestinal tract. And there is a mild peripheral eosinophenia or elevated Ig levels are observed. The life cycle of strong iloid stercoralis. The rapidity-form larva in the intestine are excreted in the stool of infected person. This rapidity-form larva develops into filariform larva, which is infective stage of strong iloid stercoralis. This filariform larva penetrates the intact skin of another host. The filariform larva migrate by various pathways to small intestine where they become adults. The adults in the small intestine lay eggs. The eggs are deposited in the intestinal mucosa which are again hatched into rhabditiform larva. This rhabditiform larva migrate to small intestine and they can become filariform larva. The filariform larva penetrates the intestinal mucosa and migrate to other organs which is called the auto infections. And the rhabditiform larva in the intestines are excreted in the stool which completes the cycle. The first stage rhabditiform larva of stronger stercoralis are 380 micron long with a short buccal canal and a rhabditoid esophagus divided into three sections extending one by three of total body length and have a prominent genital primordium. The infective third stage filariform larva of stronger stercoralis are 600 micron long. The tail is notched. The esophagus to intestine ratio is 1 is to 1, which helps to distinguish from hookworm filariform larva, which have a short esophagus and pointed tail. The infective L3 larva are found in soil and can invade the human host by direct penetration of intact skin. We will discuss platyhelminths in upcoming videos. These are the references for this video. Hope you like it. Thank you. Bye. See you in the next video.